All right, welcome back to the weekly walk and talk today. Welcome to a very wet, cold and windy central London. So we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, so many different stories from ExxonMobil and uh, that's an interesting one. We'll start with that. What else have we got? UK high street, we'll mention that. Stock rally, holiday travel, Lake Erie, freezing homes, excess deaths. Very interesting statistics that we've got there. We've got stuff from Goldman Sachs as well, job losses, uh, and a man who is now says he's a dog. Yes, uh, we'll get into all of this on today's video. So let's start with the first one then, and that is that ExxonMobil is suing the European Union. And it's a pretty crazy story, actually, because they're saying that this tax windfall that the EU is suing them for um, is going to cripple the industry. It's already stopping investment. They said that people are, and again, they're getting into all the usual stuff, uh, people are going to freeze to death. There won't be energy. There won't be this. There won't be that. But I wouldn't feel too sorry for them because they did just report a last quarter profit of 20 billion, with a B, uh, dollars, 20 billion dollars of profit. That's one quarter. That's not, you know, a year or five years or 10 years. That is for the quarter. That's how crazy it is. But I think the interesting thing, well, what I think most of you will be interested in is that they are saying that already they're not seeing investment going back into the industry. So there's going to be less energy, what, the, what people call fossil based fuels, there's going to be less fossil fuels as a result of this. And they're already seeing issues because they can't drill that all of these ESG mandates as well. Let's link this in. So the same with these ESG mandates that because they are an energy company and not a renewable energy company, that they're not getting access to finance. They're having um, not the same sort of banking access. They're not getting as good rates on borrowing and all of this. So they're just basically letting rip on ESG, as we do a lot as well. But moving over to the UK for a moment, and we'll go back to some global news then. So moving over to the UK, I thought this was funny. So I saw this um, article story on the BBC, the British brainwashing corporation. Let me uh, just read this comment out. So it says UK high street thriving after troubling year. And they've got this guy saying, things have never been so good, said this uh, retailer. He said, this is the best I've ever, I've ever seen it. Well, I did a quick search on Company's House to see how long he's been in business. He's been in business for three years. <laughs> so no bias there whatsoever by the BBC, choosing a retailer that's been in business for three years and he's never seen it so good. Hmm, I wonder why he's never seen retail so good in the last three years, 2020, I don't know what happened then, 2021, uh, what happened then as well? Whoa, I almost slipped there. Super, super slippy as we walk through the park today. And then the other point that made me laugh about this, um, this story was they got flannels, which is this super overpriced, high-end fashion retailer, I guess you can say. And it's using them as this as this case study saying, oh, look at flannels. They're making a fortune. They're doing so well. And, you know, they interviewed flannels and they're saying, oh, yes, we're making a fortune. There's, there's you know, so much money around and all this sort of stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah, there's, there's a lot of money for high end fashion because recessions are the same every time. Who do they affect disproportionately? It's the poorer people. It's the middle class but rich people aren't really affected. So they're still, and just actually today, I was walking down this, um, I don't know what street it is, it's by Wimpole Street in London, and it's all super high-end fashion brands. And there's queues out the door at 9 a.m. Queues, sorry, to get in to these stores. Massive queues outside every single one with people who look extremely wealthy. I mean, extreme wealth. So this is just more bias, more nonsense, BS 
by the media saying retail's back, oh, it's never been so good and all this. Not true. Retail has never been so bad for the last three years, probably in history. And that's, you know, we've got to obviously use an inflation-based calculation there. And the other thing they mention, which is frustrating as well for me, is they keep coming up with all this stuff about the stock market. Oh, massive rally, massive rally in the stock market. And yeah, okay, yesterday on Thursday was a massive rally in the stock market. But I've mentioned this loads and loads of times over and over again you are going to see these big rallies every once in a while, but then you see massive crashes. So they're, they're talking about Tesla and, oh, I had this big rally, 8% or whatever. Yeah, but what they don't say is that Tesla also crashed 8% or something like that the day before or maybe the day, a couple of days before. So this is what they're not saying. They, they don't ever say this stuff. And they say, oh, big rally and everyone should get into the, the markets and all of that. No. <laughs> Don't get into the markets just yet. That's what I would say. As we go into a recession, just look at the charts, just look at history. Um, and remember, I've got a course on this below in the description. You can find my stock market course. It's very clear and tells you, uh, and again, it's not just my information in the course, it's historic information and charts. It shows you what is most likely to happen. And I think, and again, I'm going to say this here, this is not financial advice, but I'm just going to say it to give you a kind of in indication. I think that what we're probably going to see is lower lows in the first couple of quarters of 2023. That is most likely looking at history in the charts. But then once this pivot comes in, once rates start to drop and liquidity becomes more available, uh, debt becomes cheaper, etc., then I think we'll see a rally in the market. And I think it's probably going to be a big rally at that. But if we go into a real deep recession, almost a depression, as it were, then uh, don't expect that to happen. So that's just what I think as of right now. Obviously, that will change. It could change next week if the, the central banks uh, change their policies. But as of right now, that is kind of what I'm looking at. And remember, we've got a private community as well. So you can always see all of my uh, investments and my stock watch list. Because the other thing you've got to think about is if there's this massive rally and finance is booming and all that, why would Goldman Sachs be just about to lay off 4,000 employees, which is about 8% of their workforce? Why would they do that? Why would all of these big investment firms, hedge funds, etc., big banks, why would they be laying off staff if we're about to go into this big boom? It's obvious it's not going to happen. This is just media manipulation yet again. They're trying to pull in, like they did in the Great Depression, things like that. They're trying to pull in the working class, the middle class, everybody else, just before a massive crash. They do it every single time. The media is just absolutely terrible at this. Now, the other thing that some of these finance companies are talking about is that even later on, they don't think they'll bring back all of the staff because AI has become so advanced now. It can do a lot of this work that the staff were doing. And I only talked about this. Oh, I've been talking about it for a long time, obviously. But this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing a lot of jobs lost to AI. And I was thinking about this today because I got a, an Uber. I got a driver yesterday. You know, I've been traveling around a bit. I thought about the food as it was getting trucked in as well. And what I sort of realized was that when AI comes in for driverless vehicles, uh, cars and taxis and uh, transport and trucking and all this, I didn't really think before about the sheer scale of job losses that could occur from all of this, but it is gonna be absolutely huge for the um, industry. If you're a driver, then Goodness me, this is not going to be good. Now, I want to move on to this other point. It's not an article or any, there's no article, there's no media out on this at all. But I like to follow all the statistics. So Office of National Statistics for the UK, um, US, which is, you can't really follow the USA or the Canadian stuff because it's all lies, absolute pure manipulation. I've never seen anything like it. But the UK just published, so the ONS just did a, a publish. You can find this. I'm going to put a little screenshot on screen here so you can see what I'm about to read out. So this is what it says. The place of occurrence with the highest number of excess deaths due to causes other than CV-19 was private homes, 
with 89,253 excess deaths. And it says in brackets here, a 30.2% increase. And this is what I don't understand, that there's all of these excess deaths and it keeps coming up over and over again. I'm not gonna make any judgment on YouTube here as to what could be doing this, but you've heard me talk about this before. I think it's a, a contribution of a number of factors that is causing this. But I don't think it's just that one thing. I think there are other things at play here, including how all the medical got shut down for two years. So you had this massive waiting list, which has now gotten bigger. And you've had all these people that need surgeries and medical stuff, you know, and they just can't actually get any of that help. That they, you know, they needed all this assistance and they haven't been able to get that assistance. And I think it's starting to catch up now. But if you look at these reports, and again, they're very few and far between, it doesn't even go into detail as to why so many people are dying. And I pulled up a little list of celebrities because they do these lists every year of celebrities who have passed away. And this year's list was enormous. And I mean, huge list. So I just wanted to pull out a couple of celebrities that you will know that have actually passed away in the last year. Okay, I guess we can say the biggest celebrity was the Queen of England. We all know about that one. I think everybody in the world knows about that one. Uh, but we also had Meatloaf. Did you know about Meatloaf? Pele, I think that was just overnight or yesterday. Pele, uh, Vivian Westwood, Olivia Newton-John, James Kahn, Jerry Lee Lewis, David Warner, Coolio, the, the rapper. He was only young as well. Uh, Kirsty Alley. Then we had Hilary DeVay. Do you remember her from Dragons Den? I think a lot of you, if you're in the UK, will remember her. And then Robbie Coltrane from, from Harry Potter. And again, I just wanted to read out a few names that you'll, you'll recognize. And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. That's what I'll say here. As always, I leave the uh, judgments down to you guys. <laughs> drop a, well, I shouldn't say drop a comment. You, you're gonna get me in trouble at some point with these videos, with all of these comments. I could just imagine, you know, that every time I post a video, there's some sort of person from the intelligence services or the FBI or something, and they're just sat there in their underpants at home or wh wherever, working from home, just watching and making a note of all the stuff that I, I talk about here. But if you are in the USA, uh, following on from my video yesterday on air travel, hundreds of thousands of people were not able to travel this Christmas to see families. And I think Southwest Airlines is getting the brunt of it. There's all sorts of lawsuits against them now. But it was a pretty crazy storm though. Oh goodness me, Lake Erie. Is that what it is? Lake E-I-I-E, -E -E, Lake Erie. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know if you've seen the movie 2012 where everything just freezes and you know all the buildings are just encased in ice. Well that's what this the houses look like there and also Ontario Canada as well. The houses frozen solid. Some of them I don't know if this is true but I saw this report that said some of them behind four inches of ice so couldn't even get out the front door couldn't even open the windows or get out the windows and that's why I always say have your wood burner have a little bit of wood uh, someone messaged me actually and said oh I got snowed in a friend of mine in the US Midwest he said I got snowed in and I said so and he said yeah I got I couldn't use my wood burner I said why couldn't you use it and he said oh all of my wood was in the store outside oh my goodness so I know he's watching this I won't uh pass any comment on his uh, intelligence level there for doing that. Okay, and let's finish with this last crazy story then. So I don't know if you've seen this doing the rounds, but a man has fulfilled on his lifelong dream to become a collie dog. So he paid $15,000 for this uh, Hollywood kind of studio artist to make him uh, a, a dog suit so he can become a dog because obviously he identifies as a dog. By the way, really funny exercise. I don't know if you've ever used ChatGPT, which is a, an open AI software. So I've been using it in the last few days and that is a very interesting software because it is very 
very liberal in terms of its views and it doesn't even realize it. So I've been having lots of these conversations with this AI software, trying to figure out, okay, is this completely unbiased like it says it in? And it's definitely, definitely not unbiased. So ha ask it some difficult questions if you haven't used it yet and you will find some really, really strange answers. So I was really hoping when they launched this AI kind of chat bots and service bots that can help you online, I was hoping it would be completely unbiased and neutral. Nope, whoever programmed it has programmed it to be extremely liberal in a lot of its viewpoints, to the point that it even gave me a lecture <laughs> on a question I asked it. So anyway, give it a go, start typing some questions into it and you will see how crazy this this software is anyway. But yeah, this man, he's got a, you know, he identifies a dog now, he dresses as a dog. He, go, he gets taken for walkies by his wife, I guess it is. It's a woman anyway that's taking him for, taking him for these walkies and feeding him. And it is super weird. He's got a YouTube channel with 15,000 subscribers. He's only just started this channel. I mean, who subscribes to this? I can't even imagine. But I went on and looked a couple of the videos and read some of the comments. And these comments are nuts. Oh, I support you. Oh, wow, this is great. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I'm so glad that, you know, you, you identify as a dog and you can live your dream to be a dog. He's not a dog. It's a man in a dog suit. Oh my goodness. These comments are crazy. And I just thought, has no one, not one single person said, hey, maybe you should go like see a psychiatrist maybe just get a mental health checkup, speak to someone about this, because that's not normal to want to become a dog. Maybe just speak to someone, there might be something there in your past, maybe something, I don't know, something happened there. Um, it seems a bit unusual. Nope, nope, none of that. It's all um, very, very supportive of him becoming a dog. But alas, that is the insane world we are now moving into. And ask that question to chat GPT as well, by the way. Ask them about identifying as things. You will get some very, very interesting answers. All right, well, that is it for today's walk and talk chat. I will see you probably next week. We'll see. I'm taking a few days off, so we'll see what happens. But I'm going for a little bit of sunshine. I'll say no more at this point. Going to get a little bit of sunshine while the island is getting battered by storms at the moment. So thanks for watching and being a subscriber here. Feel free to check out my uh, course that I told you about or join the private community, one or the other or both. And apart from that, have a great weekend and I'll see you very soon. Take care, God bless.